Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can tell from the title, I am so excited I'm having another Etsy restock. I have not decided the exact date of when it's happening, but by the time this goes up, of course I will know. So I'm going to be putting the date and time on the screen, um, and it will be in the description box. I'll be posting about it on my Instagram, but I wanted to get this video filmed so that I have it ready for whenever I want to upload it. I have two new items for my shop, and also I am restocking a few author portraits. And I'm just so excited for the new items, as well as I always love my author portraits. So I'm just excited all around and I can't wait to share with you guys the things that I will be selling on my Etsy shop again. I always say this in every single one of my Etsy restock videos. If you are new to these Etsy videos, I have a whole playlist so you can watch all of them from the very beginning. About two years ago is when I opened my Etsy shop for the first time, and ever since then, you guys have been blowing me away with your support and your kindness and your generosity, and you guys supporting my shop and supporting my channel. You are making me able to do the things that I've always wanted to do, and you are making me able to live my dream job as a freelance illustrator and a content creator and I really can't thank you enough for making this possible for me and I'm so glad that I get to share my artwork with you and whenever you guys post pictures of my artwork in your homes or by your books or anything it just warms my heart more than I can say to know that my artwork is in the world and has a new home with you um, also really quickly the lighting might get a little weird just because the Sun is behind a tree and it's pretty windy outside and the tree keeps moving so if the lighting gets weird I apologize but we are just going to have to live with it um, anyway so yes I just want to give my big biggest thank you and I just wouldn't be here without you honestly so yes um, anyway without further ado I am going to just show you guys the things that I will be having in this restock so I will show you the first things that I'll show you are my author portraits. So if you are new to my author portraits, you can hear all about them in all of my other Etsy videos. I don't want this to be super long. My videos that I film in my other room, my reading room, this is my bedroom, which I film most of my sit down videos in. But in my other videos, you might see these, which are my author portraits. And they are kind of my, my pride and joy. I started designing them or drawing them in college and then it became this whole big thing. Anyway, without explaining the whole story, um, these are just other portraits that I draw in graphite and I bring them into Photoshop and I overlay the texture of an old page and the manuscript, the handwritten manuscript or the typewritten text of whatever book the author is known for or that I choose. So anyway, the ones that I will be restocking, there are two of them that I think are perfect for October that I specifically wanted to have available this month, and that is Edgar Allan Poe. He is on the page of The Raven, and then on the other side it is his poem, Annabelle Lee. He just has such an incredible face. I just, yeah, I love Poe. So this is Edgar Allan Poe, and then the next one we have is Mary Shelley. Poe is actually one of, he was one of my first ones that I drew in university for the project that inspired this whole series. So this is one of the very first ones. And then this is one of my most recent ones, is Mary Shelley on the page of Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus. This is partially handwritten and then on the other side it is fully handwritten with her manuscript of Frankenstein. Um, so yes, I really really love how this one came out. It's so interesting to see how I'm developing as an illustrator and an artist because for me I see such a big difference in style between these two. I feel like this I was experimenting a bit more and with this one I'm more comfortable with my line work and I'm getting more of a sense of my style through this one. But I do still love this one because it's one of the originals. Another one that was from one of the first restocks or it was from the first stock ever. That is Charlotte Bronte. She is on the first page of Jane Eyre and then the title page of Jane Eyre. This one always sells out, which just makes my heart so happy. You guys have no idea how grateful I am of how excited you guys get about whenever I do a restock. As the artist, you're always or at least for me, I'm always second-guessing myself. I'm always my own worst critic and I never feel like my artwork is good enough. Your support just it's just the 
it's just what I need. <laughs> so thank you so much. Anyway, so this is Charlotte Bronte. And then the next one is another one that sells out and has sold out every time I stalk her, which I just love so much. This is Jane Austen on the page of Pride and Prejudice and the title page and then the first page. Another one that always sells out is Leo Tolstoy. He is on the page of the original Russian text of Anna Karenina. And then on the other side is this charcoal portrait that I did. It's three portraits of Leo Tolstoy on toned paper and then I just added his signature over top. This is one of my favorites. I actually have this framed on my gallery wall if you ever see that in one of my other videos. And then the next one is Ellen Montgomery. She is on the page of Anne of Green Gables. And then the first page of Anne of Green Gables, the title page. This one I'm including because I have another Anne of Green Gables print that I will be selling and that was actually in a video that I just filmed with it which is my embroidering my Anne of Green Gables book cover but I will get into that in a little bit. So that's Anna Montgomery. And then the last one I have not restocked him in a really long time and I'm so excited too because I just felt like it was it was about time that I restocked him. Also again for another reason to go with another print that I will be selling and that is Mr. Knightley or Johnny Flynn in the 2020 version of Emma where he plays Mr. Knightley. So this is the first page of Emma and then the title page of Emma. Mr. Knightley is one of my favorite Jane Austen characters. I love Johnny Flynn. He's one of my favorite singers and songwriters and actors and so I just love this one so much. Um, this is actually the only character portrait that I've done, but I'm hoping and planning to do some more character portraits in the future, so definitely look out for those. So those are all of the author portraits and one character portrait that I will be selling um, or restocking. And now I get to share with you the two new items. This is for the two new items. I'm so excited. As some of you may know, one of my favorite things to do is redesign book covers or to design book covers in general. And I've never sold them as prints before in a bigger version. I've only sold my Red Rabbit, my Maurice hands, my Anna Karenina hands. But those were the first versions and I have done some tweaks, I have redesigned my redesigns and I'm so excited because I have bigger versions. So this is the back. I'll just show you the back first. So it has a few of my little designs that I have made. I do them on my Instagram reels and my YouTube shorts. They are the little drawings that I do that I have available that you guys can get as tattoos if you want. There's a tattoo ticket that's also available on my Etsy shop, but that is just a separate thing. If you want more information about my tattoo tickets, that is um, in the description of the actual product. So if you go on Etsy and you look at the description of the tattoo ticket, it's pretty self-explanatory. But if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but yes, yeah, so the tattoo tickets are all for the little designs that I have made on my Instagram reels. So those are the ones that I chose. They're just a bunch of different ones that have books in them. So I just picked my bookish ones and my contact information if you want to find me on any social media or anything. And then we have the prints, which I'm just so excited to show you guys. So I have designed most of these when I was in college. I am hoping to get back into redesigning a bunch more and making it a part of my channel. I just posted my embroidering Anne of Green Gables book cover. Making that was so much fun. Editing it was so much fun. I've just gotten the itch again to create more book covers and to just create more. So the ones that I have available I will show you this one first. It's my Anna Karenina book cover because you guys might remember one version that I sold was this one. I'll put a picture up. And that was an oil painting that I did that I also partially illustrated in Procreate and on Photoshop. And that was a series that I did my senior year of university right before I graduated for my thesis project. And I loved how it came out, but it wasn't perfect. And I didn't love how the traditional media mixed with the digital media. I just felt like it didn't mix that well. So I wanted it to be completely digital and I wanted to change a little bit of the design. And that's what I did. And I'm so happy with how it came out and I can't wait to share it with you and you can get it as a print. So these prints are five and a half by eight and a half inches. So the Anna Karenina cover looks like this. 
I am so incredibly happy with how it turned out. So my original idea is inspired by a quote from Anna Karenina, and that is, all the variety, all the beauty of life is made up of light and shadow. And so we have, with their rings on, this is supposed to be Levin and Kitty, they're holding hands in the sunlight, so it's like sun coming through a window, and this is supposed to represent Kitty and Levin, and then in the shadow, it's supposed to represent Anna and Vronsky, or Anna and Karenin, and it is the hands that aren't touching but are trying to grasp at each other, but they are the shadows. So it's supposed to look kind of like this is the shadow from these hands, but they're actually not the shadow because, as you can see, they're not holding hands. So it's two different figures, two different kinds of stories that I'm trying to tell. And one of my ideas for my thesis project was to create narrative book covers with hands that tell a story through gesture, through hand gestures. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And then I just put the title and the author up and below because I felt like it just balanced the image out really well. Something that I love is balance in book design. Um, and I just really, it's just so pleasing to my eye and I hope you guys like it. I'm so happy with how it came out. Also, there is a very faint pattern like wallpaper on the background and that I also designed myself. I can put a picture of what the one design looks like and then I just repeated it to make it look like a wallpaper and then I lowered the transparency so that it wasn't super visible. So that's just what's in the faint background. But anyway, this is the first one. I'm so happy with it. And then one other thing is that the Anna Karenina one is sold by itself because this is just the book cover. Some of these have the book cover and the, the back of the book because I designed a whole jacket for them. But this one I just designed a cover, if that makes sense. The other one that I just designed a cover for is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman. This, of course, says Call Me By Your Name, and then Andre Asiman right here, and then illustrated by Carolyn Castagna, and that's me. <laughs> and um, this was actually inspired by a cover design that I did initially in my junior year of college, or my sophomore year, my my second or third year. I actually brought that design to Andre Asiman when I met him at a book signing for Find Me when the sequel to Call Me By Your Name came out. I liked that one, but as I developed as an illustrator and a designer, I wanted to change it up a little bit, and so I made a redesign of my redesign, and this I love with my whole heart, and I hope you guys love it too. So I took the ideas that I had in the first one, and I just changed them a little bit. My digital techniques have improved a lot and so that's kind of what I wanted to capture and I just feel like it's really fun to see how you can take one idea and change it into a bunch of different ways. So that's what I did with this. So we have this pattern of peaches which if you guys have read Call Me By Your Name you know the peach scene. The peach scene is iconic. Um, and I wanted to capture the peaches because I there's also another aspect of nectarine juice that they have in part of the, the book and also the film. I just really wanted to capture the atmosphere and the vibe of somewhere in northern Italy in the 80s, which is where this story takes place. So that was my idea. I did a kind of textured line work. I don't know how to properly explain it to make it make sense. <laughs> I have this background that has a bit of a texture, and then I also added shadow behind the peaches because I felt like it made it a bit more three-dimensional. It made it pop a bit more. And then underneath we have the figure of Elio and Oliver. I want it to sort of give the atmosphere of their relationship the, the mood of their relationship. So we have Elio who's kind of sitting more towards the foreground. Oliver is slightly more in the background establishing who's the narrator and who is the love interest because Elio's in the foreground so he's the narrator. Oliver is slightly in the background so he is one of the other, you know, the other main character but not the one telling the story. And then we have this archway of leaves which I wanted to sort of mimic the archway of the peaches and the leaves. And then um, over top we have these two brush strokes of orange because, and I took the same kind of orange from the peaches and I made them sort of crisscross so that where they crisscrossed it overlapped the name, the title, and then it went into the characters. Um, just because I felt like it was kind of like these two roads that are merging um, when they call each other by 
their own names. Um, and so that's kind of the meaning behind it, and I'm just so happy with how it came out, and I hope you guys like it as much as I do. So that's Call Me By Your Name. And then the next ones that I have I will show you is the Anne of Green Gables book cover. So the next ones come with the front and the back. So this is the front, which is the Anne of Green Gables embroidery, and then this is the back, which is also the Anne of Green Gables embroidery. But I just posted a video all about my process of embroidering this cover for Anne of Green Gables. So if you want to see how I did it, how I embroidered the whole thing, then you guys can watch that video. I tell you my inspiration and you can just watch me embroider it. And if you like it, then now you can have it for yourself, which I'm so happy to be able to share my art with you guys. It's one thing to create art and to be happy with the outcome, but it's another thing to share it with people. So we have the front cover of Anne of Green Gables. I wanted it to kind of look like Anne might have embroidered this herself because embroidery is part of Anne of Green Gables because Anne embroiders in the story. So I, I felt like it really matched. And then the back is the back of the design that I created and it just says, Dear Old World, you are very lovely and I'm glad to be alive in you, which is one of my favorite quotes from Anne of Green Gables and I felt like it was perfect for the book design. So this is the front of the book and then this is the back. So the way that it was laid out, it was like this and then the spine in the middle and then the two French flaps. But anyway, you guys can just get a front and a back and you can display them however you like. If you just want the front, um, you get a back for extra, I guess. Now the next two kind of go together in a series that I have started but want to continue doing. Book designs for Jane Austen books that are kind of in a rainbow. So we have pink and blue already in this rainbow. I want the colors to match the vibe of the stories, but also the main aspect of these designs is to create sculptures that have some kind of significance or can symbolize the story in some way. So it's the main character, the main female character, interacting with a sculpture that has some kind of significance with the story, if that makes any sense. So the first one that I ever designed was for Emma by Jane Austen. Emma is all about this main character, Emma Woodhouse, who is trying to match make. She's kind of acting like a Cupid in her social circle. So I decided to take the sculpture Cupid and Psyche and make a narrative image, portray or explain or narrate the way that Emma acts as her own Cupid in her social circle. Emma Woodhouse, which is the pink figure, in front of gazing at the statue of Cupid and Psyche, and then Psyche actually has the arrow going into her heart and then there's some pink around her, there's pink on their cheeks and elbows. I wanted it to sort of represent Emma in this very humorous light, but also this very romantic light, because this is all about, you know, romance and falling in love and trying to match make, and so that is the sort of meaning behind this cover. And then the back, if you look at it this way, so this is how the cover is designed and then the spine obviously is in the middle and then we do have two French flaps but just for this you have the front and the back. So the back is actually Mr. Knightley looking at Emma and it has a quote, one of my favorite quotes from the book, if I loved you less I might be able to talk about it more, which I just I love so much, oh my gosh. And we have Knightley gazing at Emma as he does, kind of being her distant protector, which I sort of wanted to illustrate in that way. And then on the edges of the book, you guys can see slightly over here, we have this texture of leaves or this pattern of leaves. And on the spine, I will put my original illustration, my original design, the leaves kind of act as a sort of border for the spine and the edges. But you can just see them on the edges of this a little bit, but they were cut off because I just wanted to give you guys the front and the back without the spine and the French flaps. But anyway, so that is my little explanation of how these two work and what they symbolize. So it's supposed to just be Jane Austen characters interacting with sculptures that relate to the story in a color that matches. So of course pink, I feel like, matches with romance, and in the 2020 adaptation, there's a lot of pink in that movie as well. And so I was really inspired by the color palettes of that movie um, and that adaptation. So yes, very happy with these, love this so much. I'm really so excited about that series, and I would love to continue it as I read more Jane Austen. 
Then the next one we have, of course, is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And this one is in blue because I felt like blue is a very calm color. It's very serene. Whenever I think of Pride and Prejudice, also the 2005 adaptation, I picture greens and blues. And so that's what I wanted to capture. I wanted it to be in blue. And then this has one of my favorite sculptures ever on it. It's Rodin's The Thinker. And The Thinker on the cover is supposed to represent Mr. Darcy. And then on the back, we have Mr. Darcy in a very similar stance with his hand on his chin just like the thinker so it's supposed to be mimicking the posture of the thinker and then above mr darcy we have the first line of pride and prejudice which is it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife and then if you look over here in the light blue that kind of matches the flower border and parts of his figure, we have the last word wife, which is the thing that he's looking at. So the, the whole story really is him contemplating his feelings for Elizabeth and the aspect of wanting a wife and marriage is just the main aspect of the story. Um, and then on the cover we have Elizabeth Bennet looking at the thinker as she looks at Darcy's portrait in the book. And then of course in the 2000 adaptation we have Kira Knightley, who portrays Elizabeth, looking at the statue of Mr. Darcy portrayed by Matthew McFadden. And I love that scene, and I wanted to mimic it in a way that I wanted to put my own spin on it. So we have the thinker instead of an actual statue of Mr. Darcy. We have the thinker representing him, and then they're in the same stance or posture or you know, thinking position. And then I hand drew the title and then we have Jane Austen, which is just underneath the pedestal that the thinker is on. I love this one. I love all of them. I'm really proud of them. I hope you guys like them. So all of the designs that have a front and back that I designed a full jacket for, you get both the front and the back when you purchase it. And then the ones that are just the single image of the covers, these just come by themselves because I didn't design a back. So those are the book covers. I hope you like them. I love them. I get so funny about my artwork because I feel like you have to be your own advocate. You have to, you know, be proud of the work that you've done. And I am very proud of the work that I've done, but also at the same time, I am my own worst critic and I sort of have a hard time advocating for myself. But anyway, here we go. The next thing that I'm going to be having available in my shop, I am so excited, is stickers. I have never sold stickers before and I love how these came out. I'm so, so happy and excited to show you guys them. So these are all stickers of the designs that I have made on my Instagram reels. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, I have posted a few of them as YouTube shorts. I have a whole series where I design bookish tattoos inspired by specific books books or authors or first lines from books and it started out as just something that I did randomly for fun and then it became this whole series that you guys loved following and then now a few of you actually have my designs tattooed on your skin and that's just mind-blowing to me that you guys are walking around with my artwork on your bodies. That is just the coolest thing ever. Um, but for the people that don't want to get my designs tattooed either because you are not a tattoo kind of person, which is totally fine, or if you would prefer the less permanent version, <laughs> we have stickers that you can put in journals, on water bottles, on your laptop cases. You can put these stickers on whatever you want, on your phone case. It's up to you. They will come in a sheet of four, and each one is from a different book, so I will explain a little bit better. So these first ones are for Mrs. Dalloway. These are four designs that I have made and the actual sticker is one and a half inches wide. I am so happy with how they came out. I actually got them printed from the same company that I get my other things printed from. They actually do stickers and so you get a set of four. They're this really nice shiny material and they the quality came out amazing. I didn't know if they were going to be blurry or if they were going to come out nice and crisp and clear, but they are so detailed I could not believe it. So I'm very happy with the quality and I hope you guys are too. The next one I have is a series from Van Gogh's books. So these are designs inspired by some paintings by Van Gogh where he painted books 
and I just created some line work and so you get these four for the one sheet. The next one I love so much and that is my Anna Karenina stickers. Here they are. It is the dice scene, the book cover, we have a Russian doll, and then we have the hands. It's um Anna and Vronsky's hands. Then the next ones are for Call Me By Your Name. So if you love Call Me By Your Name, you can get the book cover and you can also get stickers with Call Me By Your Name images on them. So this is what they look like. We have one of the hand scenes, the peaches, Elio writing in his journal, and then the note that Oliver leaves him. I'm sorry, my voice is getting so weird. It's because I'm talking way too much. <laughs> and the lighting is getting weird as well. <laughs> the next ones I have are for Pride and Prejudice. Jane Austen, and then Mr. Darcy in his sculpture form, and then a um, Elizabeth holding the book, Mr. Darcy's hand, which above it, it says ardently. My voice, oh my goodness. <laughs> I filmed a video before this and then I'm filming this one. I'm just talking way too much. <laughs> the next one I have goes with The Great Gatsby. I would love to design or redesign a book cover for The Great Gatsby, so that's on my list. But I, there are so many covers for The Great Gatsby. That's something that's a bit daunting with classics, is trying to make something original that hasn't been done before. Um, but there are so many that I love, so it's also like, will I be able to make one that I love as much as I love the other ones? I mean, I don't know. We have a daisy, we have the iconic last line from the book, Gatsby's hand and the green light, and then of course the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. They are just so clear. I can't believe how crisp they are. Like, the writing with the daisy is so small, but you can read it perfectly, which I'm so happy about because I was m very worried <laughs> that it wouldn't print well. And then the next ones we have are for Jane Eyre. I have done a cover or a book jacket for Jane Eyre, but that one I didn't get printed because I might want to tweak it a little bit. I'm not like 100% satisfied with the final design. So that might be coming in the future, but anyway, these ones are the tattoo designs that I did for Jane Eyre. We have Bertha as the red bird, which says, Reader, I'm free. And then we have I am no bird. So this is supposed to symbolize Jane as the white bird. And then this is Bertha as the red bird. Reader, I'm free, kind of as a different version of the other line in the book. And then this one says, no net ensnares me. It's a cage which is broken. And then we have Charlotte Bronte. It's so cool to see my designs as different items. Like my artwork is on a sticker. That's just so cool to me. Um, and then, yeah, also to see my book designs actually printed is just the coolest thing ever. So I have a few extras for myself and I think I'm going to frame them and put them in my room somewhere. I'm so excited. Um, so yes, I have all the information about shipping and everything is on my Etsy shop, but to say a little bit about shipping now, because they are bigger items, shipping is calculated entirely by Etsy, so I really have no control over shipping costs. So international shipping can get pretty expensive. I feel horribly, but I can't do anything about it because that's just something entirely out of my control. Just keep that in mind wherever you are in the world. If it's an international order, shipping can get a little pricey. Usually orders in the US aren't that bad. That will be calculated into the price on Etsy. And then the other thing that I wanted to talk about was my tote bags. So if you guys remember a few restocks ago, I designed and came out with tote bags with my on the page design on them. And that was just for that restock. But a lot of you have been asking if I will be restocking on my tote bags. And I would love to because so many of you guys have asked for them. And I would love for more of you to have my tote bag. That would just be so cool. Um, so let me know in a comment if you guys would be interested in me reissuing the tote bag again. Also, I was thinking about a few other designs for the to for a tote bag. So if you guys are interested in more tote bags, would you like any other specific items? I'm trying to grow my shop in a feasible way. Sometimes it's hard for me to have certain items just because of shipping purposes. Like if I did t-shirts, I would have to get a bunch of different sizes of t-shirts. It's a big undertaking. It's just me. <laughs> I'm doing everything for my Etsy shop, so it's a bit hard to try and keep up with everything because I'm the only person doing it. If I had 
assistants um, or someone else helping me. That would be <laughs> that would be a different story. But it's just me, so we're going to be doing this with slight progressions. So first we had author portraits, then we had a tote bag, now we have stickers and bigger prints. So I'm trying to grow my, my shop slowly but surely. Anyway, um, so if you guys have any questions, I'll be leaving a lot of information in the description below. If you have any questions at all, definitely feel free to ask. Um, my voice is getting horrible, so I'm going to stop talking now, but yes, ask any question you have. Um, I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support, all of your kindness. I hope you're excited to get some of this artwork if you're interested, and I can't wait to write my personal notes to you guys, which I love doing, and wrapping all your orders and sending them out. It's just such a fun process for me. I feel like it's really a wonderful connection because I have these items and then you have them, and it's a way that we can really connect. Um, so again, thank you so much for all your support and kindness and love, and I'm sending it right back to you guys. I hope you're having a fantastic day, reading some amazing books, and I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading!